Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm testing a new format. It is called Everything Can Happen Tuesday. It's the first Tuesday of each month where I speak about a tool that is not affinity photo but helps you be a better photographer. Today it's going to be an app called Photo Pills and you can see my screen recording over here that shows you how that app works. I'm going to look at my phone and talk about talk you through the app. So you can see the screen right now and you can see there's a lot of different functions in here. So to go over some of them, you can see for example, you can plan your shots here up on the left side. You can see where the sun is moving, where the moon is moving. You can calculate exposure. You can have charts for depth of field for field of view and you have other kind of charts here you can have AR overlays which means you can use the camera of your phone and then have lines over it that show you where certain things are in the image so we'll go into that into more depth about that in a second but before we do I want to show you these other parts because they are kind of important so uh, first of all, you can make plans here where you can plan your shots and you have a list here of your plans. That's good. You can find points of interest. So a lot of them are already marked out for you. So you can find points of interest um, around the globe, basically. But you can also add your own with this little plus icon on top right side. You click on that and you can see you can make a new point of interest. Describe it a little bit so you can plan out where you want to take your photos. Another thing is uh, here in the settings, it's also interesting. You can see they thought about a lot of things like what kind of units they use, what's your favorite camera type. And also, for example, this is interesting down here, device usage height. If you can see that, this is how high you hold the device when you use it so that the AR works better. So they really thought about a lot of interesting things here. Now, let's talk about what the app actually does. And one of the main things that I really find amazing here is the planner. So you click on that and you come in here and I selected a field so you just can see the lines better. And you can see this is a satellite picture, uh, just as a field out on the countryside. But of course you can place it in the city wherever you want to plan the shot. Now here is the amazing part. If you look at the top, you can see where the sunrise will be and the moonrise and on the red and the blue point this is where the sun will set and where uh, the moon in this case will rise because yeah of course um, and these are the lines you can see also on the screen with the red and the blue line and with the yellow and the light blue line now there is two other lines. If I move this around here, this is the sun position and the moon position. So with these lines, with the orange line is moving around, you can see where the sunlight is coming from and with the blue light where the moonlight is coming from in that kind of situation. And another thing you see here is a black line that is changing in size. And this is the shadow and you can change the height of that pin also so you will know exactly in which direction and how long the shadows are gonna be at a certain time of day so when you want to take a photograph you can know if for example the front of the building that you want to photograph is going to be in shade or not or maybe half shade so the sun is coming from the side you have these beautiful shadows that highlights the details of a building, of a sculpture, of whatever you want to photograph. So that can be very, very useful. And another thing you can also see here, you've seen that the screen is changing in color. So this is night, of course. And then we approach the blue hour and then we approach the golden hour. So you can see that all of the screen now is golden. Here you have already a lot of information and this is combined with a map so you can see it exactly at the location where you plan to go in the future and you can set this for any kind of day it doesn't have to be today it doesn't have to be right now let's go over to for example here the sun and this as you can see is a very simple overview of the different stages of the sun so you can see here when i scroll up 
There it is nighttime, then we have the astronomical twilight, the nautical twilight, the blue hour, the golden hour, the sunrise, then you have daytime, then is the moonset. So everything here is pointed out for you with the exact time of day in here. So that is very useful. You can move this around here so you can exactly see where the sun position is going to be. Uh, depending on the horizon and also down here you have a lot more other information for example here you can see when I've moved the finger around the time changes then below that we have the daylight so how much daylight will I have on that special day um, you have the azimuth degree the elevation and those are more specific things you probably don't need to know um, in that kind of situation. But uh, you get this kind of uh, information. And this is really, really nice to know down to the minute when is the blue hour, when is the golden hour to be in the morning, in the evening. And the same goes for the moon, where you even see the moon face and... Um, as you can see, a lot of other information here. You can also see the moon in relation to the sun and also the shadow that uh, the Earth is creating on the moon uh, up on top. It's moving around. What kind of moon phase you have and a lot of other information. So this is really amazing for planning day shots and night shots. Really, really nice. But there's a lot of more stuff in here. For example, this is really cool um, if you want to do your own settings, if you want to be more versatile and understand more about photography. What this is, is a calculator. And up here you can calculate the aperture, the shutter speed or the ISO setting. Now, the thing is, what this is meant to do is that you make a test shot on your camera with the settings you like and then you look at the histogram and see that these test settings actually work so nothing is overexposed or underexposed and then below that you have equivalent settings where you say okay if I for example in this case I start out with f 3.2 and 1 50th of a second's exposure time ISO 400 and I get a certain shot what kind of setting, what kind of shutter speed would I use if I change my F, for example, to 9? So from 3.2 to 9 and the ISO from 400 to 500. And here it says the shutter speed is going to be one eighth of a second. So this is calculating that for you. And another thing you have here is also you can have for different ND filters, which is also very useful. So you can enter this here. For example, like so, and then it tells you, okay, now it's one fourth of a second. So you can calculate here your settings uh, for your camera. That is a very, very useful tool here. Okay, let's go on to other things we have here. For example, we have here settings for depth of field where you can choose your camera type. As you can see here, there's a lot of information in here, not just DSLRs, you can see also video cameras and smartphones and all these kind of things. You can also search here. Let's enter Canon, for example, uh, whoops. And then you can find different Canon models. So there's a lot of information in here. So this is based on the camera type. Then you can also set up your lens that you're using or an equivalent over here. So it's also calculating that for you. Also teleconverter, if you would use one, you can do that. And then you enter here the settings and then below, as you can see up there, you enter the settings. So 50 millimeter F 1.4 and then um, 15 meter distance of the subject. So, for example, you have a statue that is 15 meters away from you. You're using that kind of lens with this kind of F setting. And then you have your hyperfocal length, the hyperfocal near limit, depth of field near limit, depth of field far limit, depth of field, how big the depth of field is basically, and um, other information in here that helps you to make the right settings. So this can be very, very helpful, for example, for creating in this kind, uh, in this situation, a depth of field settings. If you, for example, want to have a blurry background behind the subject, this is important for you, or you want to have a, bl a blurry foreground, you know? Uh, so this is where you say you have the near limit and you have the far limit, so you can see at that point, um, the focus is changing, you know?
So this is important uh, for taking these pictures and knowing which part is going to be in focus and which part is not going to be in focus for depth of field. Now also we have here the field of view. Field of view is how much you're going to see uh, when you look through the camera from the angle side to side. So this is going to show that to you. Also, ba uh, based on the subject distance and on the format, do you have portrait or landscape? What kind of lens? What kind of camera? Another thing that can be very useful here is these tables. So depth of field, hyperfocal table. For example, let's go in here. Again, you set up your camera. You set up your focal length and then you have these charge for your f-stops. As you can see here, this will tell you the information about the hyperfocal distance for this kind of given setting. So you just go through the chart and then you can see what the values are without having to type it into you can, can just maybe this can be quicker for you if you're more used to these kind of charts. The same goes for depth of field. You have the same setting here as you see and up here you can see calculate near and far plane so it gives you two values for the near and for the far and for example up here these also go to infinity so that's also very useful and this is often uh, used in landscape photography when you want to have the background sharp and the foreground sharp and in that case you often use a trick where you're not gonna set the focus on the main subject but bring the focus closer so the foreground is in focus and then the background because the focus is gonna go into infinity is gonna be in focus too so everything will be in focus in that shot and this helps you to calculate it for you different f-stops and for the subject distance depending on the focal length as you can see up here you can change that again and the camera types there's a lot a lot of interesting inf uh, important information here there's a lot more you can find meteor showers you have a overlay for ar for night that shows you where the moons are and other things another cool thing that is here really really nice is star trails for example if you always wanted to do a star trail photography this will tell you how it works are you on the south or the north part of the planet basically and this depends on um, how the stars are moving basically for the earth rotation of course and so if you up here you see the degree so if you say i want my stars to turn let's say 52 percent degrees sorry 52 degrees you would have an exposure time of three hours 27 minutes five seconds you don't even have to enter that into a timer you just go down here on the lower left side you see it says timer you click on that everything is entered for you you just hit start when you take the photo and the timer is set for you so this is super convenient for taking these star trail pictures and there is even more stuff for example time lapse also very nice you say for example i want to have a clip that's 30 seconds long and i want the shoot to last for 30 minutes at that time i have to take this photo and um the speed of the film is going to be 25 frames per second you can also change it. you can say okay no it's 30 frames per second there you go and uh, this is going to be the size of the image that you know from your camera the average size. let's set it to eight megabytes and so it tells you the shooting interval is going to be two seconds the number of photos is going to be 900 and on your memory card you need to have seven gigabytes free if every picture is going to be eight megabytes so also this can be very very helpful and up here you can also see you can not only calculate shooting interval but also the clip length and the event duration so you are free on deciding what kind of information you want to get out of this calculation and you can see there's even more stuff here 
And um, I'm not sure if I covered this already. You can see here in the Academy, you have a user guide, which is very much in detail. This is an online user guide, so you need to be connected to the internet, sadly, um, if you're out in the nature. Oh, you can also download it, as I'm seeing right here, as an ebook. So that is very helpful. And it covers everything in detail. Really nice, easy to understand explanation. And the other part here is the video tutorials, which is also very nice, which not only covers the functionality, of the app but also gives you nice inspiration uh, for example here's how to photograph the Milky Way so you learn that with the video how to find and plan the Milky Way so uh, you can see here he's using the AR overlay with these lines looking through his camera and the camera then will show him um, with an overlay where the Milky Way is going to be at a certain time. So before you go there at night, you can already plan. And then, for example, if you would go to a location and then at night figure out, oh no, I'm on the right side of the mountain. The mountain is covering the Milky Way, can't take the shot. That's not good. So you want to plan that ahead and exactly know where everything is and what kind of conditions you're looking at, what kind of exposure time, stuff like that. So you have everything planned ahead of time then go there and be really relaxed and can just concentrate on taking these amazing pictures okay so this was the everything can happen tuesday tell me in the comments if you like the kind of format if you want to see more of these things and you can also just suggest things that i should show in that video thank you very much for watching and see you soon bye